Hello, everyone. It's me, Sabrina, and we have a really potent new moon coming up on March the 10th. We have an amazing alignment with the constellation Lyra, as well as the Lyra Renebula. So I want to share a little bit of information about this constellation Lyra. And I also want to share a deeper meaning of why we set intentions for the new moon. So in astrology, a new what makes a new moon is having the moon and the sun lining up in the exact same sign. That creates the darkness of the new moon. So they're in the same sign. And what this means to me is the heart and the soul coming together. And that's reflected onto us. We are getting the opportunity to really bridge the heart and soul of ourselves together, the heart and the soul of you into harmony. And it is through this harmony that we plant the seeds of intention. So we get to reap what we sow. Like these are the things that we really, really want. Now, when I ran the chart for Toronto, it made a castle shape. I could show you. Okay, here is the castle shape. So having this symbol showing up is pretty rare. The castle doesn't show up often. So when it does, it's, it's important to take note. So I want to ask you to ask yourself, what does a, the castle symbolize to you? When you hear the word castle, what immediately comes to your mind? For me, it's longevity, it's family, it's heritage, it's power, it's being in charge and in command. Those are the things that come to my mind when I think of the word castle. So keep in mind what comes to yours, because this might be the focus for where you are setting your intentions. Because like I mentioned, the castle is very rare. The other thing I see connecting here is Lyrans represent the root race of humans. So we are descendants of Lyra. I'm just sharing information. You take what resonates and leave the rest. Okay. So many of us, many star seeds have all experienced a life in Lyra and taking that with castle it's symbolizing something really ancient, really long-term, really old, but also really powerful. And the way I feel this new moon is like we're waking up to the ancientness that we really are, that power that is in our DNA and always has been, remembering that we're not broken. We are already whole but now we are opening up to the missing pieces and starting to implement them and integrate them and digest them to make our reality. So there's a lot going on here. Um, the next thing I'm going to share about Lyra is its location. So for any stargazers out there, Lyra is in it lies in the northern half of the sky. It's a northern constellation. It has its own ring nebula. I'm just going to share the screen. Here is Lyra. Constellation Vega is the brightest star. M57, this represents, this is the number for Lyra ring nebula between Shiliac and Salafat. Those are two star names there in the constellation. And Lyra is often seen as a harp. But in older times, that harp is what's called a lyre, a musical instrument that looks like a harp to us. So there is this representation of music and art, sensuality, um, and creation like what do you do when you have a musical instrument typically you create something with it you create the sound with it lyras are masterful creators 
And we're getting an opportunity to really think about what we want to create in this lifetime to build our castle or to strengthen the walls within our castle. You can see from the left here, we have Lyra alignments in so many of our celestial objects. So these two represent sun and moon, the ascendant, the midheaven, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Black Moon, Lilith, Chiron, North and South nodes. All of these are having alignments with Lyra. Squares are usually more challenging. Trines and sextiles are like blessings coming in and conjunctions is easily manifested energy. And that's coming through our ascendants. So if you know your astrology or you have a birth chart, you can look at the placements of these celestial objects and get a more personal approach as to how this is affecting you and taking it a little further and asking yourself the questions of how does this strengthen my castle? What do I want to implement here? All right, so you can see that that's a lot of alignments happening and that is pretty rare that they're all in the same constellation. So now I'm going to share to you what Lyra energy is like. Okay, so them being the root race for humanity, they are very seasoned travelers, okay? They've lived on other stars, other planets here on Earth. Um, they've been in wars, the draconian and reptilian wars, and their homes have been destroyed. So they've always had to leave and repopulate and find home again. What Julia Balaz has said about Lyrans um, that always stuck with me is that if Lyrans had a slogan, it would be home is where the heart is. Home is where your heart is. So just like soak that in. We have to create our home because so many of us don't even know why we're here and how we even got here. So it's very reminiscent of this Lyran story. But like I said, take your discernment. You take what resonates with you and then leave the rest. So because Lyrans are always have been on the go quite a lot, they are active and energized. The energy is like leadership. They know how to command their space. They know how to lead. They know how to enjoy life because so many of the Lyran lives were wrongfully taken away. They are emotionally strong. All the experiences they went through have made them emotionally strong. And since Pisces is a really dominant sign with this new moon playing on our emotions, take this as an opportunity to strengthen your emotional chemistry. The Lyrans are intelligent and tactful. They're independent, but they also know how to work with community. They are amazing magicians and masters of metaphysical. So maybe becoming more open to the idea of life is magical, that we all have these abilities, that might be something you're waking up to. And maybe rewriting the program of growing up in a family line where this stuff was seen as too woo-woo or negative or bad. Maybe it's not. Um, and we just need to flip that script. So you are becoming the own authority figure of your life. Um, Lyrans are also very connected to cats and uh, I love my cats and they're also flirtatious and they keep wisdom they have so much wisdom they've been around for eons and they've had to make so many new homes over and over and over again so what wisdom are we waking up to in this new moon or what wisdom do you want to wake up to in this new moon ask yourself create a bit of time to take some quiet and ask yourself these deep questions. So when you plant the seed of intention, that it's actually meaningful and it's something you really want to see manifesting in your life and in the world. The celestial objects, the planets that Lyra has connected to for this new moon. I'm going to show the screen again so I don't miss anything. Look at this. Okay. 
the sun and the moon, as I mentioned, it is the heart and the soul. We're going really deep here. Every new moon, though, we get this chance to get deep and real with ourselves. What does my heart and soul want together? What is that singular thing that they are both working towards? And it might not actually be singular, but what is that harmonic manifestation that your heart and your soul actually wants? We're going to go on to the ascendant. The ascendant is our personality. It is how the world sees us. So something about us is changing. The way people see us might shift. The way we present ourselves in the world might shift. And then it's also sextiling Vega, the brightest star in the constellation. This is the midheaven. So when I do an astrology reading, when I look for career advice for the person, I like to look at the MC. What are you innately good at? What draws attention to you in a really positive way? And how do you shine your light to the world? And a sextile is a really positive influence. And Vega being the brightest star, you're receiving this really bright, positive influence. And hopefully it's you getting closer to your truth, to that best version of yourself. We have Alad Far in Mercury. This is a sextile. Mercury is all about our mind. Could also represent how we communicate. Mercury is, I think, it's the messenger of the gods, the ability to travel out of this earth and then bringing that information back to earth. And this is a positive thing. Now, when we get to Jupiter, we have a trine with Vega, the brightest star again. And Jupiter is about growing. I grow. This is the planet of encouragement and expanding our horizon. There is a sense of optimism and increases your chance chances of good fortune and good luck. And it's a trine. So this like is it's like a double whammy of positive influence. Now moving to Saturn. Saturn is a wonderful teacher and sometimes it could be a little bit strict. Saturn likes boundaries. But it's having this sextile with Aladfar and getting this boost of Lyran energy. And what it's saying is I can achieve. I can do things that maybe I thought I never could before. So this could be a beautiful blessing of surpassing your limitations, of seeing boundaries more as a structure for your success, not to tear you down but to give you prestige, maturity, discipline, and how can you go for the adventure you really want and achieve it. Next, we got Uranus. Uranus here. And I, I actually really love Uranus. It's the blue planet. It's trining Sheliac and the Lyra ring nebula. So like anytime I see a nebula, or a different galaxy, I automatically think way out of this world, like super unknown, but I don't think of it as a bad thing. I think of like, wow, like who knows what other amazing things are out there. So we have Uranus here and Uranus is the planet of evolution. We are having this trine to Shiliac and the Lyra Ring Nebula supporting our evolution, our social reform. It's associated with your genius, your individuality, and your unconventional ideas. So we're really breaking out of this ancient cycle to evolve and, and just let that land with you. See what automatically comes to your mind first. Moving on, though, we have a really deep, deep wounding with Black Moon Lilith. Chiron is here, too. And both Chiron and Lilith are, are the wounds. Um, Black, but, excuse me. Black Moon Lilith is more of a really deep subconscious wound that we're not always even aware that we have it. But it's a trine. And I see this as an opportunity 
that Lyra energy is providing for us. It wants us to step out of this deep subconscious wounding. And we have confirmation of that with Uranus helping us to evolve, Jupiter helping us to expand. Oh, sorry, Jupiter helping us to expand and Saturn helping us to achieve and then Mercury helping us to think and communicate outside of these normal confines. We are surpassing what we were led to believe. Chiron is a square. So this is when the energy gets a little more friction. When it's a square, it's a bit harder to achieve, but it doesn't mean you're not going to. This, to me, I see this as we're clearing some karma here with our wounding and also our north and south node. Vega, the brightest star is there shining its light, the brightest light as best as it can with the Lyra ring nebula here um, in, in Chiron. So there is so much opportunity for growth. And even though the growth is uncomfortable, and challenging and sometimes hard, it doesn't mean you cannot do it. You can feel the discomfort and the fear and do it anyway. It's like really trying to push you to step outside of that comfort zone and see what else there is. Sometimes the only way to grow is to be uncomfortable and really challenge yourself. So as you can see, this is a, a very powerful new moon. It doesn't line up like this all the time. The castle doesn't show up all the time. These are rare moments and really special moments. So when we take that, when we take the opportunity to focus, we have a profound, powerful time to shift and to change. So welcome the change within yourself. I'm going to show you another slide that I made. Give me a moment. Okay, so here is the other slide I wanted to share with you. Look at this Lyra ring nebula. Like, it is just emitting so much energy. Maybe you can feel it already just by looking at this picture. The ring nebula is an interdimensional vortex. So what I like to call this is like a really busy airport. You can go in and out and get to anywhere in the galaxy through vortexes like this one. What astronomers have discovered is this ring nebula emits this green gaseous energy. So I wanted to share these two pictures with you for a purpose. If you want to meditate and if you do know your galactic alignments and know you have a lot of Lyra energy already in your natal chart paired with this new moon with tons of Lyra energy coming in, this would be a wonderful time to try to connect with Lyra and Lyrans even more. So you can use this image of the ring nebula and feel, sense, or know this green energy to be there. It already is, just our awareness hasn't synced up with it yet. Um, or you can use the star, getting familiar with the shape of the star and just imagine it coming to you. There's a lot of visualizations you can do to help you connect with Lyran energy. One thing I want to share with you about the new moon is a little exercise that you can do or some affirmations to write. And first of all, giving yourself permission to change. I give myself permission to change. Because why wouldn't we, right? We have Jupiter here. We have Saturn. We have Uranus here. Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, and it's all about dreaming. So give yourself permission to change and trust that the change is a blessing and supporting your ascension and your growth, because it really is. Um, your dreams may very well be affected. Mine already have. It started 
<laughs> that I remember anyways, it started two days ago with some very profound messages coming through the dreams. Um, and taking some time to appreciate and value life as it is. Look around you, see the beauty, value your independence, but also value your community because we really are all connected, whether we're aware of it or not. And remember, we're getting the opportunity to strengthen our castles, our dreams, what it is we truly want for one another and this world and how this world is actually affecting others and others are affecting ours. So the more lighthearted and positive we can be about this, really taking a lesson from Jupiter here to be optimistic and positive. How can we put that out into the field of awareness for everyone to reach out and grab? So I hope you have a really magical new moon, a very Lyran new moon, because this is so rare and special. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the images of Lyra Ring Nebula, of the constellation, that you can practice some affirmations and really make the best of this new moon. Know that your heart and your soul is bridging together and the seeds you are planting are serving your highest available timeline for the greatest good of all. Enjoy this Lyran energy. And until next time, namaste.